Okay, next we're going to check out the grid and the snap settings in Reaper. Now the grid are the lines we see right here, going up and down, and we can turn the grid on and off from the toolbar over here. Turn it off, we don't see the grid lines, turn it back on, and we do. Now we could also do that with a keystroke. On the PC, it's Alt-G, and on the Mac, it's Option-G. Just hit it. The grid goes away, hit it again, it comes back. That's a lot quicker than using the toolbar. Now, if we want to make adjustments to our grid, we could right click it on the toolbar. And that opens up our snap grid settings. Up here is where we adjust the grid settings. Turn it on and off from here, which is the same thing as up here. We can adjust the lines. By default, they're set to quarter note. But we could change this to eighth notes. See, there's more lines. Sixteenth notes, whole notes. So there's just lines on each bar. But let's put it back to quarter notes, which is the default. We could change the way the lines look over here. By default, they're going to show up as dotted. But if we turn them off, they become solid lines. A little bit easier to see if you prefer. And like this, they're dotted, a little more faint. We can decide how they show through our items. By default, we see them through the items. We can change it to be over the items or under them. So we don't see the lines in the items, just underneath. Again, that's your personal preference. By default, they set the through. So these are the grid settings we can adjust. But the grid settings work with snapping. Snapping is over here. We can turn it off from here or turn it back on. When it's on and we move an item, it's going to snap to our grid. So if I move it, it snaps to every quarter note. And if we turn snapping off, it's not going to do that. It's going to move freely, but we could adjust it a lot more. We could also turn it on and off using a keystroke. On PC, it's Alt S, and on Mac, it's Option S. Hit it, turn snapping on, so it's going to snap to every quarter note. Hit it again, and snapping is turned off. It moves freely. Now we could adjust the snap settings by right clicking over here. This opens up the same dialog as the grid settings, as they share the same dialog. Up here is the grid, down here is snapping. Let's turn it back on, which is the same thing as turning it on from here, or using the keystroke. Now the first thing I want to show you is down over here. Snap to grid at any distance. This is on by default, so when snapping is turned on, when we move this around, it's going to snap automatically. You can't move the item anywhere in between. It's either snapping when snapping is turned on, or it moves free when snapping is turned off. But we can get somewhere in the middle. Let's open the settings up again, but this time we'll use a keystroke. On the PC, it's Alt L, and on the Mac, it's Option L. That opens up the settings here. And let's turn this option here snap to grid at any distance. Let's turn it off. And when that's turned off and snapping is turned on, it's still going to snap, but only when you're close to that spot. We're at bar four. It snaps as we get close to it. But you can place it anywhere in between. Let's zoom in a bit. So if I go over here, it seems like it moves freely. But as we get closer to bar four, this quarter note, it actually snaps, kind of like a magnet. It kind of attracts to that spot, or the next quarter note here, or this one. Now we could adjust how much it attracts, or how closely it attracts to the line, based on the setting right here, snap distance. Right now it's set to four pixels, 
So if we're within four pixels, as we move it right here, it's going to snap. But if we move past four pixels away from the line, it no longer snaps. Now, personally, that's a bit too sensitive for me. I like to go a bit higher. So let's make this number a little bit higher. Let's try eight. Now, if we're within eight pixels, it's going to snap. So it's a little bit easier to notice the snapping. This one, or this one. And if we go even higher, let's try 25. Now it's going to snap a lot more aggressively. Snap. So it's a bit harder to go anywhere in between. And again, that's a personal preference. But I like to use 8. And this only matters if we turn off Snap to Grid at any distance. When this is turned on, it's not going to matter. It's going to snap if it's turned on, or not snap if it's turned off. But if we turn this off, it's only going to snap when you're within 8 pixels. Like this. So you can go anywhere in between without it snapping. Now the next option I want to show you is right over here. Snap relative to grid. Right now it's snapping based on the left edge, right here. But if a useful transient isn't on that left edge, let's say we line it up like this. Let's zoom in. So that this hit is right on the downbeat. Now if we want to move it to a different bar or different beat, it's going to snap based on over here, not based on over here. So if we do it, see it snaps over here or over here? That's not what we want. We want it to snap relative to this line over here so that this spot lines up with the grid. So if we choose this mode here, snap relative to grid, it's going to behave that way. And notice the icon here looks a bit different, letting us know we're in relative grid mode. So now if we move it, it's going to snap so that this area stays on the grid. Move to here, it snaps here or here. So if we undo it, it started over here. So we're this far away from the grid, and we're going to stay that way for snapping purposes. Snaps here, here, and here. And that's relative grid mode. And let's turn that off. The next thing I want to show you is right over here. Grid snap settings follow grid visibility. Again, this is on by default. So even with snapping turned on, if we turn off the grid, it's no longer going to snap. So when we see the grid, we know we're in snapping mode and it's going to snap. But if the grid is invisible, it's not going to snap. And again, that's on by default. But we can separate that. If we turn this option off, now our grid and our snapping are totally separate. Right now, the grid is quarter notes. We could change the snapping to be eighth notes. So now, if we move this over here, it's going to snap to the nearest eighth note. Here, here. Even though our grid is set to quarter notes. Or we could turn off the grid by hitting that keystroke, and it's still going to snap. Because our snapping settings are independent of our grid. And that's adjusted over here. Grid snap settings follow grid visibility. If we turn this back on, they're not separate anymore. Turn it off, and we can separate the snap settings from our grid. So our grid could be on. Set the whole notes, and our snapping can be set the quarter notes. See our grid is on whole notes, but we could still snap to the nearest quarter note. So it's completely separate. But let's put this back so they're both the same again. And we'll put this back to quarter notes. So now we have a quarter note grid. And we're also going to snap to quarter notes. Now up over here, 
we can decide what snaps. By default, these are all turned on, but let's go through each one. The first one decides if media items are going to snap to selection, markers, and our cursor. So if we create some markers, like here, here, and here, that aren't on the grid, and create a time selection over here, and put our cursor over here, when we move our items, it's going to snap to all those things. It's going to snap to the end of the time selection, the beginning of the time selection, our markers, and our cursor. And that's decided right over here. Media items snap to selection, markers, and cursor. And we can do the same thing with our selection. If we're creating a selection, it's going to snap to our markers or to our cursor. And our cursor is going to snap to our selection and our markers. So here's our selection, here's the markers. If we place our cursor, it's going to snap to the end of the time selection, the beginning of it, and any of the markers. Now down over here, besides what snaps on the grid, the first option is media items. Obviously, you want your media items to snap to the grid, like this, like we've been doing all along. But we could do the same thing with our selection. Let's clear the selection. Now, if we create one, it's going to snap to our grid. But only if that's turned on. If this is turned off, it doesn't work for our selection. It doesn't snap. And the same thing for our cursor. Whenever we click our cursor, it's going to snap to the nearest grid line. Here, here, or here. And that's set up right over here. So all these options can be turned off or turned on, based on your personal needs. Now down over here, we could snap our cursor to the edges of media items on any track. Let's make a few more tracks. And let's place them not on the grid, somewhere in between. So now we can place our cursor, obviously on the grid, it's going to snap, but we could also place it at the beginning of items, even if we're not on that track. Like over here, if I click, the cursor snaps to the left side of this item, or this one, or this one, even from down here. So it snaps to the edges of any of these items, which is very convenient for copying and pasting. Let's say we wanted to line up this one with this one. Just cut it, click over here, and now we know it perfectly in line with this one. So we can paste it, and these two items are now lined up. And that's this option over here. Snap cursor to edges of media items on any track. But it's off by default. Now we could also decide what actually snaps. By default, it's going to snap the start, or the snap offset. So when we move these around, just the beginning or the snap offset, which is this right here, this snap offset right here, just those are going to snap to the grid. The left edge or the snap offset. Let's get rid of that. So it just works for the left side. But what about the right side? Let's say we're using a reverse sound right over here. We're not as concerned about the left side. We want the right side to line up with the grid. So we could change that over here. Set it to snap both the start and the end. If we choose that, now we can move this around so it ends on bar 17. See how it snaps right there? That's very convenient for reverse effects. But there's one other option that's even more flexible. And that's the option over here, mouse position dependent. If we choose this, if we put our mouse towards the front of the item, that's what's going to snap. Right here, or here, or here. But if we put our mouse 
towards the end, that's what's going to snap. So again, it's more flexible for doing reverse effects while still allowing us to work the way we normally do. Just grab by the front and the left side is still going to snap. Only if we grab this side is the right side going to snap. So it's a bit more flexible. But let's put this back to the default. So it's only going to snap on the start or the snap offset. Now the last option I want to show you, and that's the snap media items to nearby media items up to 10 tracks away. That's the default anyway. You could change this to your preference, but here's how it behaves. So let's say we wanted to line up this item with this item. They're four tracks away, but with this option turned on, they're going to snap to each other. So not only are these going to snap to the grid, but they're going to snap to each other. Like this one. See it snaps? See that blue line? Allowing us to line up our media items. Let's move it to line up to this one, which is a few tracks away, or this one, or this one. So it's great for lining up our items. And it's set up right over here. Snap media items to nearby media items up to 10 tracks away. If that's too much for you, and as you're moving them around, they snap a bit too much, just turn this off or change this to a lesser value. Now there's one last thing I need to show you, and it's probably the most powerful part of using snapping in Reaper, and that's disabling it using the shift key. So right now, with snapping turned on over here, these items are going to snap either to the grid, to our cursor, to each other, to markers, But we can disable all that just by holding down the shift key. Hold it down, and the item moves freely. It doesn't snap to this, to the grid, to the cursor, or to each other. So we could turn snapping on and off for our media items just by holding down the shift key. And we could do that midway. We don't have to do it before. So right now it's snapping. But while I'm still holding it, I could hit shift, and it no longer snaps. Or it could let go of shift and it snaps again. So we could use that modifier either by holding it down before or even in the middle of what you're doing. So, anyway, that's the grid and snapping in Reaper. I hope you can see how powerful these features are. And let's move on to the next video. Oh!